a view from Australia. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's happening in Australia. It's not a very technical presentation, but it'll give you an overview of what's happening, but also what's happening through the Global Water Research Coalition, of which DOA is part of that, and uh, PUB as well. So um, Stephanie Rink Pfeiffer, who's the CEO, is also based in Australia. So got two, two, different, uh, two different views here. Um, so what's happening down in Australia? Just to give an overview of those who are not familiar with, um, with Australia, uh, most of the water utilities in Australia are vertically integrated. In other words, they run everything from wastewater to drinking water, recycled water and desal. That's in general. Um, and they've got three sets of regulators. They've got an economic regulator, so normally an independent economic regulator that sets prices. So a water company needs to apply to that economic regulator who will set the price. Then there's a health regulator and, and then there's environmental regulators. Um, just to give you an overview, for instance, over here in Western Australia, uh, Water Corporation basically runs that whole state and that, to give you an idea, that's 10 times the size of Texas. So once you get out of Perth down here, which is a city of about 2 million people, there's pretty much nothing. It's desert and then up, up in the north there's a lot of indigenous communities that are very, very remote um, and got our own issues about giving good water services up there. But that's not the subject of this presentation. And same, same basically uh, for South Australia and the Northern Territory. So what you have is very big distances, very concentrated. Um, so Australia, you might not know, that uh, is the third most urbanised country in the world. So in the middle, uh, not much. Uh, right now, uh, at the moment, uh, over in this space, there is the worst recorded drought uh, in white man history. Um, not forgetting that Aboriginals have inhabited the country for around 40,000 years, um, but at least in white man history, this is the worst recorded drought. There are many towns in um, this sort of area that are actually uh, a bit like the Cape Town situation two years ago that are, are on day zero watch. These are not big towns, around 10,000 people, 5,000, 10,000 people, um, but once they, they go, uh, regional centres, they're probably gone forever. So people have to move to the coast or move elsewhere. Why, do, why is this important for micropollutants? Well, what's happening now is a big discussion around purified recycled water for drinking, which we've had problems with before in Australia. Uh, Toowoomba, some people might know of, got voted down. So there's a history of purified recycled water not being supported. And when you talk about purified recycled water, of course, everybody wants to talk about micropollutants. So that's why a bit of context there. We also have members over in New Zealand, so Watercare that runs Auckland is over there. So um, there's a bit of context for what's happening now in Australia. And what, does, what do we do? What does WASA do? Our central function is really a collaboration hub for all of our members. So we collaborate on science, on research, on policy, safety, you name it, uh, we're the collaboration centre for water utilities. So we're a bit like Vaywin, I'm guessing. It's a bit, bit like that Vaywin and a bit of Stowa and a bit of KWR are all mixed in. So if you imagine a solar mine organisation, that's what we look like. And so what, in the Australian context, we've got a couple of, set of, couple of sets of guidelines. We've got the Australian Drinking Water Guidelines. Now they are guidelines, they are not standards. So they're set at a national level, but because we're federated, each state has its, really is responsible for implementing those. Um, but generally what they would do, say for Sydney Water, is that uh, New South Wales Health, which is the state, would say to Sydney Water, there you go, 100%, you've got to meet the guidelines. When it gets to regional areas, then they give a bit, bit of leeway because there's big problems with nitrate or uranium or arsenic, depending on where you are in those regional areas because they're on groundwater and they've got really poor supplies. We also have, though, um, the recycled water guidelines, which is for purified recycled water. And those guidelines are set up on, micro, on a micro daily basis. Um, and I'm sure many of you are aware of that micro daily basis. And that's for chemicals as well. That's actually mostly for chemicals. Um, and I've got some slides about what's happening in drinking water guidelines. And those have been implemented particularly for the groundwater replenishment scheme in Perth. So I talked about Perth. 
That's currently the supplies for Perth are 49% desal. So they've got two desal plants running full belt and they've got a purified recycled water, a groundwater replenishment scheme. So that needs to be, excuse me, that needs to meet the recycled water guidelines. Um, now, what we do know is that the Australian drinking water guidelines are effective. They're set by some of the best health scientists in the country. Um, I'm an observer on that committee, but I don't have a say in it because I represent the utilities. We're operators and we need to meet the guidelines. We don't set the guidelines. But what is really, uh, oh, sorry, go back. What is really uh, causing a great deal of uh, research effort at the moment is microplastics. PFAS is a huge issue and microbial resistance to a lesser extent, although it's big. And so some key areas of research indicated up there um, and certainly what, uh, Water Research Australia, University of Queensland are doing a lot of work around PFAS and Griffith University are, uh, around microplastics. And that will link in, I'll, I'll link that back to what the GWRC, GWRC is doing in a moment. So the policy context for us is that um, we've got the worst drought ever recorded, currently in the middle of it right now. Um, we've got um, Infrastructure Australia looking for bigger um, investment in our cities. Australia is becoming more urbanised, not less, which puts a lot of pressure on, on the centralised water supplies. So there's a lot of focus on how we actually diversify our supplies to secure water, for water security purposes. And in the midst of all of that is also stormwater recycling and stormwater harvesting, which is kind of interesting for cities that, where it's not raining. So it's not a guaranteed supply by any stretch of the imagination. So um, when I talk about uh, purified recycled water, you know, we've done uh, a report, and if you want to have a look at it, I've got a, a few with me, and we've actually collected up the 10 lessons learnt from around the world. So there's 35 cities and towns around the world, including PUB, that are, are doing uh, purified recycled water for drinking. Um, it's not Robinson Crusoe stuff, and uh, you know, it's a big issue for us going forward. I talked about the water quality standards and the issue of microdallies, and interestingly enough for Australia, we, don't, we have microdallies as the basis of, for chemical contamination and micropollutants but not for microbial, and that's where we're heading for the microbials uh, right now. And in particular, um, this, you know, we've got um, curves for our members about how they're going with their treatment and their log removals to achieve uh, safe drinking water. So I talked about Perth, uh, and purified recycled water is now underway um, in southeast Queensland. And just to give you, uh, an indication that stretches, so this is a water grid which operates over about 250 kilometres from a desal plant all the way down here up to Noosa which is about 250 kilometres away. Uh, the major dam Wyvernhoe is there and is subject to huge flooding. So Brisbane is tropical and when the drought broke after the millennium drought broke in 2011, um, massive, massive floods. So we're what we're seeing in Australia is huge extremes. So we've got you know, every, record in, every record in terms of heat and dry has been broken right now, but when it will break, and it probably will break sometime in the future, um, we're expecting massive extremes in the other direction. Um, and that's what we're seeing more and more. And so the insurance industry in Australia is basically put out maps already to say which areas of, of Sydney or the capital cities will be uninsurable. Right? And believe me, there are massive areas with very expensive properties sitting on those spaces. We're going a bit off topic, sorry about that. Um, just thought you'd be interested. So some of the other things which are really interesting, drug monitoring, um, it was, uh, I'm sure it's done around the world now. I've, I've heard it talked about around the world. Um, and that, I think it kicked off in Australia at some, some stage in the past. And so they do massive, um, you know, looking at uh, cocaine use and ice use and all the rest of it. So they, that's a big part of the research program. 
Um, we've looked at through the University of New South Wales prioritisation of contaminants of emerging concern and again that was done through the GWRC and, uh, and that's accessible to all the GWRC members including STOA. Um, we've got um, a huge amount of work happening on microplastics um, and uh, this, this story here about people eating a credit card size worth of plastic each week certainly caught the imagination of uh, the media, as you can imagine. So I had to do a bit of radio about that, and you know, it's not, that's not from water supplies, you know, but, but it's, a, you can, it's actually top of mind. Because water is right of top of mind, anything that's in water is top of mind. Lovely music, thank you. Uh, we, and, and I just sort of talk about some of the GWRC projects we've got. So I'm swapping hats and putting on my chair as GWRC. Um, on now, we did a, a round robin now on microplastics to see, so if you were talking about microplastics, what are we talking about? What does the, you know, if you, if you took a sample to a lab, what does that look like? And, and we, so uh, TZW was the, was the leader of this project. Um, but the upshot of it was is that um, there is no, there's no universal method attached to this. Um, that uh, we need a fair degree of standardisation to, to reach at a common point when we start talking about microplastics and their potential impact on human health through drinking water supplies. There is a huge variation on the way people actually analyse for microplastics. So the message from that is, um, yes, it's, it's an issue to definitely watch for, but we're all talking ab about it at different levels and on different playing, playing fields. So there's a bit of work to do there, but it's on the, it's on the, uh, uh, on the menu to look at. We did um, a, a survey around the GWRC members, and that's 14 international research institutes from around the world, um, just to have a look at how concerned people are about PFAS. And you can see that uh, certainly uh, there is a huge degree um, of, of concern. Um, it's a big issue. Um, right across the world and one of the big issues of course is that um, you know it's because there's so many so many um, uh, different formulas attached to PFAS it comes in different sh shapes and sizes it's very hard to regulate and I think certainly from an Australian perspective um, our health regulators are finding it terribly difficult um, to to come up with what reasonable levels are so as what will happen elsewhere in the world, they'll be extremely conservative. So this is a real area of, of concern uh, right now. I think the other thing to be, you know, of course, to be aware of is Gore-Tex, cooking utensils, what's the load that actually comes from drinking water? And we haven't sorted, we haven't got to the bottom of that either. So there's a, what, you know, th this all lends itself that we do need to keep up the international research in this space. I couldn't say that any more strongly. So we've produced, uh, or we'll publish it uh, early next year, a state of the knowledge report. Of course, as soon as you print something like that, then it's out of date, but you know, you've got to put the marker in the sand somewhere. Um, but at least, I think from an international perspective, we'll have a good idea about what's happening at least. Where the regulatory settings are heading, where the, where the um, where the lab settings are at um, and where, where, it's, uh, where the big water industry risks are going to be. And one project's been led out in the Netherlands through the GWRC is effects-based monitoring. And I think this has been called for particularly around the world. This, this will be a very important thing for us in Australia, particularly when we head to multiple water sources uh, for, for drinking water. And, uh, through the GWRC, this project is just kicking off right now. So we're looking at, uh, looking at the um, various bioassays to come up with a battery of tests to understand what might be safe water. And that word safe in itself is a really interesting one and it generates so much discussion because you can be compliant, of course, and from a water utility perspective, you say, well, that's fine, I've got to, I've got to be compliant. But then the arguments are, is that safe? just because you're compliant, are you delivering safe water? And that's a real, um, again, from an Australian perspective, is a real point of contention right now because people argue about what is actually safe when you, when you can analyse it. 
when you can analyse any uh, set of drinking water and come up with fire retardants, fire retarded, anything you want. So um, that gives, gives you an indication. We're trying to look at um, um, you know, applying this to all sorts of water, all sorts of water sources, all sorts of finished water, um, and it's a, it's a major effort being led out of the Netherlands. So that's a quick uh, snapshot of what's happening from an Australian and international perspective. Um, happy to answer any questions so far. Hopefully that was enough for you. <laughs>